So at this point, now that we are happy with what we've done, we, are have, we have to start solving the camera. So I'm going to click on camera tracker and I'm now going to go to the second stage, which is basically to convert the 2D points that we had, which this is basically a bunch of 2D points. And we're going to hit the solve camera so Nuke converts those 2D points into 3D points. It will take a few seconds to do. And now, if we go into the 3D viewer, and this means if we hit the tab button in the viewer, or if we change, just bring this a little bigger, if we change 2D into 3D, you can clearly see now that we have a 3D point cloud, I'm just going to change this, a 3D point cloud of our room. So you can clearly notice that we have what looks like a table over here. We have a photo frame on the middle, and we also have what looks like a very poor representation of the walls of the surrounding. Now, at this moment, we don't have any cameras, and the orientation is still not perfect. As you can see, the table is actually going down in the orientation of our 3D scene. But this gives us a, a feeling that this will work and that from this moment on will be easy for us to tweak these settings to have a proper track. So let's go back to the 2D view, hitting the tab again, and let's now contemplate what we have here. Because as you can see, now we have also something different in the points. We now have orange points, green points, and red points. So if I zoom in, now, if I over the mouse over a point, I have a lot more information about the point. Besides the length, I also have now the error, the projection error, and the maximum error that it has. These errors are set by pixels. That means that this point, at some point in time, has an error of 9 pixels. If we change the settings in the lower sliders, we can get something much better. In the graphic, you can see a representation of the number of tracks, of the errors, of the maximum error, the track lengths, etc. So, if I click on any of these graphs, you can see that I have several graphs to have a look here. So, some of them are very important, others are not so important, but that all depends on the quality of the track that you have right now. Now, the important thing now is to refine or solve to get a less solve error. So select the track lin min and select the min length. Of course, you hardly are going to see anything because our last graphic was to 900. So you need to select the graph and then hit F to average the, the position of these graphics. Now, as you can see, if I go down here and if I change the minimum length, you can see by scrubbing it, what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of tracks with different minimum lengths. As I scrub through the minimum length, you can see that my points get more red and more red and more red. They get red because this means that if I'm setting the minimum length to 55, this means that any, any track that wasn't there at least 55 frames long is getting thrown out uh, of our equation. We don't want to go so deep into this, so we don't want to do so much, but I'm going to bring the minimum length up to four and I'm going to leave it like that. Now, we are also going to have to tweak the max trick, uh, track error and the max error. To do so, we need to select the max track error curve and the max error curve as well using the command or control button. After we do that, we need to select the error max curve as well. Once we have all these three curves selected, I'm going to hit again the F buttons to center them out. Now, in the lower bit, if you can see, if I slide my max track error, you can see that I'm basically clicking away all the points that have a max error above 7 or 6 or 8. If I lower it, you'll get more and more red points. So I am going to actually lower my points. So I am going to, since I've experimented with these values, I'm going to actually change the values from the, tra the max track error. I'm going to change it to 0 
So, of course, a lot of the points get red, but that's okay, because I want to get rid of bad points. And the maximum error, I'm actually going to change it to 4, 4.8 or something like that. So, this, these, uh, after experimenting a lot with these values, um, I basically uh, know that these values will work. So, at this stage, we look closely into our solve error. So we had a solve error of 0 0.89. We've now dropped that the max track error should be 0 0.6 and the maximum total error should be 4.8. So we should have a considerable drop on this value. Now, to do a drop to that value, we need to hit not the solve camera, but the recalculate solve. Every time you do changes to the curves or number or, or tracks that we had, we need to make sure that we recalculate the solve. Otherwise, if we solve the camera again, it's just going to start over again. So remember, any time you change any of these values, you need to recalculate the solve again. So I'm going to hit recalculate solve. And OK, now you can see that I have 0, 04 of solve error. It's a much better number. It's a much lower problem, much lower error. So I am pretty happy with these values now. So I think we should start by uh, orientating our scene and also giving an origin point. Now, one thing you should be asking is, OK, but I have all these red points. Now, these red points, you can get rid of them if you want to, because we have two options lower, on the lower section of the tracker called delete and solved. This will delete any uh, track that wasn't even considered to the solving. So I can click delete uh, and solve. These are basically the amber trackers. So I'm going to delete them. And I can also delete the rejected. Now, be very careful with this because if you click delete to rejected, it will delete all the red points. So I am going to click delete reject. And this, of course, will kill all the red points. So now I only have the track points that are on green. So basically, I only have the good track points. Next topic would be to make an origin point. Now, the origin point is very important because the origin point should be the zero coordinate in the X, Y, Z of this scene in 3D. So it should be part of your floor of the scene. It should be a point with a low error. So use the mouse to over in the trackers and read the stats of each track. So just go ahead and zoom in and try to look for a point that should be in the tables because since we can't see the floor, we might as well just decide that the table is our origin. And I'm going to pick up one of this point over here, although it's kind of a little higher than the origin, but I want to make sure I have a point that has a good uh, tracking error. So I have to have a point that stays in track for some time. I'm going to go ahead and select this point as my origin. So by right clicking over the mouse, you can see that now we have other options on the points. We can still delete them, extract user tracking data from 2D and center, but now we can also copy their rotation and translation. We can also create several pieces of geometry on that specific point. We can create an axis, a cube, a cylinder, a sphere, a car, or whatever. And also we can assign certain points into the ground plane. The first one set to selection is to a, a, a set the points to the ground. The origin is what we are after. Now one thing you should know is that it's incredibly important to orientate your scene correctly. If you fail to orientate your scene, you're going to have a lot of problems when you start doing geometry for the room. I'm going to hit the tab button to go back to 3D to 2D again. And now I'm going to select a few points on the table. Now, I know that some of the points basically disappear, but I'm going to go through scrubbing the footage and around like around the halfway through, I'm going to select a bunch of points that I know are part of the table. It is important not to select the point that we had as an origin before because we don't want to select that point twice. I'm just going to select a bunch of them. And I'm going to very quickly, before I do anything, just swap with the tab button to 3D and just confirm 
that all the points I've selected are in the same level. This is important, so they're all on the same axis. Just make sure that you don't have any stray points anywhere that are going to give you problems once you select them. So go back to the 2D by hitting the tab again. And now let's right click and say ground plane set to select. This now means that these points are part of our ground plane. If I go back to my 3D system, now, as you can see, the entire table is correctly orientated in the floor of my 3D scene. Actually, you can very clearly see a table, you can see what looks like the photo frame, and also what looks like the wall in the backside. Now that we are happy with our orientation, and we have a good point cloud, let's finish by updating our solve with all the new orientation that we've done. So going back into the Refine tab, in the Refine tab you have down here Refine Output. This is for you to refine your solution every time you change any kind of focal length, any kind of position or rotation. We've changed the rotation and the position of our scene. So I'm going to select those two options and I'm going to hit Refine Output. It will take a few seconds and now the output is completely refined to all the settings that we've done. So the next step would be to actually go into the tracking tr uh, camera tracker tab again and now finally since we've done a track feature we've done a solve we can now click click to create scene. If we hit create scene three nodes will show up. One node is the point cloud. The point cloud is basically the points that we have in the scene. We have now a camera and we have also a scene. So now when I hit the button create scene, you can see that now Nuke automatically has created a camera track uh, point cloud. It also created a camera and it also created a scene. I'm going to go ahead and put the last thing that are missing for any 3D system to work, which is a scanline render. So I'm going to go into the 3D menu and I'm going to select scanline render. Now the scanline render I'm assuming that everyone has some knowledge of the 3D system new. But as you know, the camera goes into the cam input, the scene goes into the scene, and there you go. Now you have a camera and a, a scanline render all working. Now if I jump into the 3D system again, and if I uh, open the tracker, I'm going to just open the tracker so I can have the tracking markers on the scene, and I'm going to have a look at my camera as well. At this stage, you have to play back and just consider to see if your scene is making sense. So, if we look closely into what we have, we have points on the table, which are here, check, this is fine. We have points of what looks like a photo frame, so check, that is perfect as well. We have what seems to be the background walls, although it's a little scattered in terms of points, but we can clearly see that there is a hell shape here of the wall. And the camera is behaving just like it should behave because you can clearly see by looking at the footage that the camera is facing slightly down. Another way of checking if this is working is to actually go in, select the camera and lock the camera so you can actually see the viewer through the camera's eye. As you can see by looking at the points, I do think that we have a feel representation of what this room is. So I think this is definitely going to work for our next stage, which is to build geometry over this room. 